Hey friends, Ash here with Gin Sense. Hope you're doing really well. Today, we're gonna to be debunking some fragrance myths. So over the past couple of years, I've gotten countless emails from you guys out there, and that's fine. Feel free to send whatever emails you want, but I've gotten lots of emails from you guys with questions. Questions like, are testers stronger or weaker than just normal fragrances? Where should I spray my fragrance on my body? Is it bad here and good here? Do my fragrances go bad if I do this, that, or the other thing? Today, I'm gonna to be tackling most of those questions and debunking them, or actually saying, uh, no, that's, that's true, that's right. So let's jump into it and check out some fragrance myths. Fragrance myth number one, testers are stronger or sometimes weaker than the actual fragrance that's for sale. So in case you're unaware, a tester is the bottle that they have sitting on top of the counter when you go into a store so that you can test the fragrance. Yeah, that's what a tester is, imagine that. You can buy testers online from fragrance discounters like Fragrance Net or Fragrance X, and typically you're going to get a pretty hefty discount if you buy a tester over the normal fully packaged bottle. Most often you'll hear that testers are actually stronger than a normal bottle. And the myth goes that they make the tester stronger so that people are more likely to buy the fragrance. This myth is absolutely a myth. It's completely incorrect. A tester is the exact same fragrance as what you buy boxed up, all nice and pretty looking. Now, depending on how a fragrance is stored, if it's stored incorrectly, then maybe there would be a difference in performance from a tester to a, a boxed fragrance. You know, if the tester is just sitting out in the light all day and never really gets used, then maybe it's not as strong as a fragrance that's boxed, but that's gonna be an extremely rare circumstance. And even then, it's not because the fragrance is different in the tester, it's the exact same, it's just how it was stored. So, testers, are they stronger? Are they weaker? No, they're the exact same. Before we jump into another myth, today's video is brought to you courtesy of FragranceUSA.com. I have a link to them in the description below. Anytime you shop on the website, use the code GENT15 to save yourself 15% off your entire order. No S, just Gent, Gent15, right here. Fragrance USA is a great website with fantastic prices on niche fragrances and designer fragrances. They've got really fast shipping. Everything there is completely authentic as well. So a shout out to Fragrance USA for sponsoring today's video. Again, use the code Gent15 anytime that you shop there. Back into some more fragrance myths. Next myth, are all fragrance testers being sold online fake? No. They are not. That is also a myth. That being said, as a bit of a caveat, people that do fake fragrances more often will fake testers than they will the full presentation. The reason behind that is kind of obvious. It's easier just to fake the bottle than it is to fake the entire presentation. Don't have a ton of time here to go into that and say, look out for this and this and this and this and this, because that'll take forever. Keeping it very simple, Buy your testers, if you're going to buy one, from a respected source. So again, the major discounters out there, you're not gonna have to worry about fake testers. And if you're shopping on eBay for some reason, just check the feedback from the store. Usually you can tell a reel from a fake store like that. Real stores are going to typically have thousands and thousands and thousands of feedback, and it's usually gonna be like 99.9% .9 positive. If you see one of those stores with like 200 feedback and only 94% of it is positive, I'd stay away. Again, that's just the Cliff's Notes, you know, keeping it short, keeping it simple, but that's a good way to start if you're looking at buying some testers. And going along with testers again, all testers have white boxes or should come in white boxes. No, that's a myth. It really depends on the company. Some of them will have cardboard boxes. Some of them will have white boxes. Uh, it just really depends. So if you're looking for a particular company, if you wanted to, you could search online and see how their stuff usually comes packaged up when it's a tester, but testers do have all sorts of different ways that they'll come. Some companies make testers with caps, 
Others make testers without caps, and some will even put like a sticker on the back of the bottle that has the note breakdown of the fragrance. That way, if you're testing it out in stores, you can flip the bottle around and see what all's in there. So all testers have white boxes? No, that's a myth. Next one is one that I get a bunch, and that is that discounters sell fake fragrances. This is a myth. The discounters would not stay in business if they were selling just a bunch of fake fragrances. It would not take very long for people to figure that out and they would be hit with mass refunds and they would be shut down really quickly. And you will see from time to time, a random website will pop up online and they'll be selling fragrances like Tom Ford's or Creed's for 50 bucks. And I'll get emails from people saying, hey, do you think this price is too good to be true or could it be legit? Uh, yes, <laughs> the price is too good to be true. Nobody is gonna be selling a Tom Ford or a Creed for 40, 50, 60 bucks when they could sell it for 200 and it would sell just as quickly. So that's kind of an aside, but if you see a website like that, yeah, those are absolutely fakes and those aren't really discounters. Those are just websites set up to really quickly take advantage of people and then disappear. I've seen it happen countless times over the years. So going back to what I said earlier, if you're talking about discounters, buying at discounters, buy from trusted ones. FragranceNet, FragranceX, et cetera, et cetera. There are a bunch of them out there that I've talked about that other people have talked about that are really well known, that have been around for years, that sell completely authentic fragrances. If you're unaware of how they can sell them so cheaply, they are gray market fragrances. And we're not gonna get into that here because again, that'll start taking too long, but you can just Google it. What are gray market fragrances? It'll pull up all the info you need. That being said, from time to time, you will see reviews from people where they say, oh, I bought a fragrance from this place and it turns out it was fake. A lot of times, I would say 99% of the time, it's not fake. It's just the person has hyped themselves up to believe before they even receive it that it's a fake. I've seen that happen before where people will place an order and they'll be like, oh, I hope it's not a fake. I hope it's not a fake. I hope it's not a fake. Chill out. It's not. Unless you bought from one of those stores where they're selling stuff for, you know, 40 bucks. And if you did that, that's on you. And when I say 40 bucks, I'm talking about niche fragrances that should be two or 300, not a random designer. Okay, next myth. Higher concentration equals better performance all the time. What I mean by that is Eau de Toilette will be always stronger than Eau de Cologne. Eau de Parfum will always be stronger than Eau de Toilette, etc. This is a myth. Believe it or not. Eau Fraiche, Eau de Cologne, Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum, Parfum, Extrait de Parfum, all of these things are denoting the concentration of the oil in the fragrance. Now you would think a higher concentration of oil is going to make the fragrance always perform better, project further, last longer, but that's not the case. To be fair though, sometimes that is the case. Sometimes you get an Extrait de Parfum and it is just monstrous, just absolutely apocalyptic in terms of the performance. But they aren't always. It actually depends on the ingredients in the fragrance and a lot of times in terms of projection, an eau de toilette will out project an eau de parfum or a parfum. Just as a really quick example, Sauvage eau de toilette. That performs in terms of projection much more than Sauvage parfum even though Sauvage Parfum obviously is a higher concentration. So with this, it really is dependent on the fragrance and what's inside the fragrance. You can't always say Eau de Parfum is going to be stronger than Eau de Toilette. Although I will say that 99.999% of the time, Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum, and Extrait de Parfum will perform better than an Eau de Cologne fragrance. It's really once you get up to Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum, Extrait de Parfum, that you can sometimes see variation in performance from concentration to concentration. Let's go ahead and hop to the next myth, which is if the fragrance says cologne on the bottle, that means the concentration is eau de cologne. That is a myth. And you see this pop up a lot online in forums, for example. They'll be talking about a flanker of a fragrance, for example, L'Homme Ideal Cologne by Guerlain, and they'll say, this fragrance is a cologne, meaning an eau de cologne, so the performance is really bad. And that's just not the case. It's not an eau de cologne, even though it says cologne 
on the bottle. So here it is, Loam Ideal Cologne. You can see it pretty prominently right there. If you flip the bottle down though, on the sticker, it is an eau de toilette. Most fragrances will have their concentration listed out like so, EDT, EDP, etc., etc. Some of them don't. The new Polo Cologne Intense, for example, doesn't have listed on there Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum. So some people will assume, oh, it says Cologne in there. It's an Eau de Cologne. It's not. Same with Atelier Cologne. They have Cologne in the name of the fragrance house. So a lot of people will think, oh, they're all Eau de Colognes. They're all really weak. They are not Eau de Colognes. So you can see here Atelier Cologne, and then it says Cologne Absolute down here. And this is just a naming convention, like Cologne Intense with Ralph Lauren Polo. Here, Cologne Absolute. What they're actually meaning is that it's an Eau de Toilette or an Eau de Parfum, depending on the fragrance. But they think that that sounds better, <laughs> essentially. And you'll see this with other fragrances as well. You'll see Eau de Toilette Intense because for whatever reason, they don't wanna say Eau de Parfum. Next myth, sunlight and heat or leaving your fragrances in the bathroom are all bad for your fragrances. This one is true, that is not a myth. Sunlight especially will very quickly degrade your fragrances and turn them bad. So you 100% do not want to leave your fragrances where they can get direct sunlight or really any sunlight at all, if possible, keep them away from that. Heat, also not good for your fragrances. If the heat is going up and then down and up and down and up and down, that can also very quickly degrade the fragrance inside the bottle. So that means your bottle that you paid however much money for is going to become bad and unusable much, much, much quicker than if you just left it on a dark shelf somewhere. And the bathroom is generally considered bad for your fragrances for the same reason that heat is. In bathrooms, you'll have fluctuations in heat as people take showers, for example, or baths, and that's not good for the scents. Then there's also the difference in humidity in bathrooms as, again, you take showers or baths, humidity goes up and down and up and down and up and down. I don't think that's as bad for your fragrances as the heat is but still doesn't help. Next myth, fragrances will expire in just a few years. As long as you take care of them, that is a myth. Now most fragrances on the box are going to come with an expiration date of sorts. So you can see it right here. It looks like a little open container and it has a 36 inside of it. So that's telling you this will go bad after 36 months but it doesn't actually just automatically go bad at 36 months. It's not like at 35 months, the fragrance is fine, and one month later, pff, horrible. The best place to store your fragrances is somewhere cool and somewhere dark. So a lot of people will store it inside the box and then just take it out when they use it. You can do that and put those up you know, in a closet or something like that. You could store it like me if you wanted. I have these shelves that go all the way around here and this is actually on the uh, basement level of my house. So it stays generally pretty cool down here. Some people will even store fragrances in little wine fridges, like little, little coolers. And you can do that if you want to keep them regulated at a certain temperature. For me, a little bit overkill, but some people love doing that. So as long as you store your fragrances somewhere proper, they should be fine, so long as you don't have a faulty bottle. So as long as your bottle doesn't have a leak where it's getting air into it, say from a, a faulty crimp on the atomizer, it should be fine. Next myth, pulse points are the only place that you should spray your fragrance. And also clothing is good or, or sometimes bad. Yeah, which is it? Pulse points, lots of people will spray there on your wrist, inside of your elbow, your neck, but they're not really the only place to spray fragrances. Yes, it's the place that pretty much everybody tells you you should spray, but the back of your neck or behind your ears are actually some of the best places to spray fragrances. And last time I checked, that is not really a pulse point. I don't think I've ever had anybody come up and like put their hand on the back of my head and be like, okay, <laughs> you've got a pulse, man. I thought you were dead. <laughs> well, which if that happened anyway, that would be weird. But point stance. Not a pulse point, fantastic place to spray your fragrance. And for me, actually, the wrist is one of the absolute worst places for me to spray your fragrance because I end up putting my wrist on things all day and it just rubs off. Like when you're sitting at a desk or something like that, yeah, 
pointless. So in terms of actual pulse points, the only one that I really use is the crook of my elbow. I don't spray right here either because that gets a little too close to my nose and it just kind of bombards it and then I'll go nose blind to the fragrance and also just don't really like spraying there in general. I might hit the upper chest, like I said, behind the ears, right back here, crook of my elbow, top of my shoulders. Those are really the best places for me. Sometimes the clavicle, but pulse points, are they the only way to go? No, absolutely not. Close bad or good? The answer there depends. Spraying on clothes can actually increase the performance of the fragrance. They'll cling to the fibers of the clothing and last a lot longer, <laughs> way longer sometimes. If you don't believe me, go to a jacket that you have, spray the inside of that jacket and come back like five, six days later, you'll still be able to smell that fragrance. So it can help you actually if the fragrance does not last all that long or maybe you just for whatever reason don't like how it smells off your skin you can spray it on your clothing and then that can be a fantastic way to wear a fragrance when can it be bad if it stains your clothing for one thing some fragrances especially ones that make heavy use of naturals can be very dark and some for whatever reason use dyes that make them dark so fragrances like that if you're wearing a white t-shirt or a white button-up or anything light colored in general you spray those on pretty close <laughs> you're gonna stain your clothing you can spray them from further away to try to mitigate that some but still yet yeah, you might not want to take the chance for me though that's really the only negative as far as spraying on clothing I don't typically do it I like to spray on skin to see how it works off my skin because that's what fragrances are really made to do typically they're not made to uh, perfume only garments but you can absolutely spray on clothes it just depends on whether it's a good idea or not and when we're talking about spraying the next myth that we're going to tackle is that you should spray into the air and walk into it just like a, what is that it's like a prince or something ah into it yeah, that's, uh, that's a bad idea, don't do that. Just to keep it really short, simple, and sweet here, when you spray a fragrance into the air and then you try to walk into it like you're trying to catch some of those molecules, you know, a couple of them are gonna hit you, you're just wasting your scent at that point. You're just spraying money into the air and just watching it evaporate <laughs> because 95% of that stuff is not gonna get on you. You're supposed to aim the atomizer and spray where you want it to go mind-blowing so when you spray into the air and you walk into it might you catch a little bit of that fragrance sure and then it's gonna dissipate very very quickly and uh, there's really no point in having sprayed it to begin with got just a couple more to go it's running really long apologies for that next one rubbing a fragrance rubbing it in is bad yeah that's true don't do that most often what you will hear people saying is that when you rub that fragrance together what you're trying to do is create more friction again i guess that's going back to the pulse point thing and you're thinking by that increased heat ooh, it's just gonna pop off there or maybe you want to spray here and then you don't want to spray there because you're a little bit cheap so then you you rub it that way you get it multiple places but you only get to spray one what that does is it degrades your fragrance. It messes up the molecules of the scent. Your top notes are not gonna smell so top notey after you do that. The top notes are the most volatile molecules in the fragrance, so that means they're gonna jump off your skin initially until they dissipate. That's why they're top notes, they're just and then they're gone. Mid notes after that, and then your, your base notes last. So instead of allowing that to happen off your skin and getting the full evolution of the fragrance, you're just like, ha no, die. And you just kind of, just kind of mess it up. Don't do that. And last one, tester strips, which are these little guys, smell the same as your skin. So it's a really good way to test a fragrance before you buy it. That is a myth. Now, it's not a bad way to test a fragrance at all. You can really get a good idea of how the scent smells from using a tester strip. And obviously, if you've been to any store that sells fragrances, you've seen some variation of these. So you get it, you spray your fragrance, maybe you, you flop it like this or something because you're, you're letting it dry. And then you give it a, a whiff. Wow, that's great, I'll take your entire stock, thanks. It gives you an idea of how the fragrance smells. It gives you like a rough outline of how it smells, but it doesn't tell you the whole story. And for the whole story, 
you have to spray it on your skin because everybody's skin reacts differently with fragrances. For some people, a fragrance will smell absolutely amazing off their skin. Just fantastic. Whoa, what are you wearing, my dude? 10 out of 10. Then you'll have somebody who goes like, wow, I really want that fragrance. Billy Bob Thornton was wearing it when I walked by him and it smelled so good. So then they go buy it. Ooh, it doesn't work for you. That happens. So if you're in a store, you're testing out fragrances and maybe you find one that just Ooh, it speaks to you. Go ahead and spray it on your skin. See how it wears because hopefully it works well for you, but it might not. So tester strips, they're just as good as skin. No, false. So there we go, guys. Whole bunch of myths. I know that the video ran really long, but there was a lot to talk about. And if I can think of any more myths that pop up, then uh, I'll do a video on this, you know, follow up. And if you can think of any that I didn't talk about, we'll go ahead and leave those in the comments below. There's a bunch of them. All right, guys, it's going to do it for me. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.